Welcome to this Textract tutorial. In this short video, I will walk you through the basics of creating a back of book index with Textract. We will create a standard index manuscript using a PDF of the book. You can also create an embedded index on a Microsoft Word document, but that is the subject of another video. Here's the PDF proof of the publication we're going to create an index for. This is a 200 page report about NASA's exoplanet science strategy. I drop it onto Textract. Textract reads the document text and sets up the project. The Create Index Wizard is brought up. I will just use default preference settings and press Finish. The initial index is ready. I press Edit to bring up the editor. This has two panels. The Index View panel contains the entry list. This is the material from which we create the final index. To have an entry included in the final index, I accept it by setting the check mark. Now I can preview the formatted index in the second tab page. There is just this one entry. A basic task in editing the index is to work our way through the entry list, accepting and, if needed, editing entries. So let me accept a few entries that look good at first sight. To adjust the text of an entry, I press Enter. Here's the preview so far. Let's take a quick look at the columns of the entry list. The column with caption F for frequency shows the number of times an entry occurs in the text. The column with caption S shows an entry significance score. This indicates whether the entry is relevant or interesting. 9 is high significance and 1 is low. Currently the entry list is sorted on significance so interesting entries are listed on top. This digit in the toolbar is the significance threshold. By adjusting the threshold, I can increase or decrease the number of entries in the entry list. Entries with a significance score below the threshold are hidden. I'll set it at 2. The last column shows the page references. The column with caption R shows how many references have been accepted of the total number. Textract has automatically created cross-references and double postings for acronyms. These are marked by a star in the column with caption star. Let me accept just a few. Here's the formatted index again. Let's now look at an entry in more detail. I press the right arrow key to bring up the context view panel. This shows the text of the book with occurrences of the indexed entries highlighted. Occurrences shown in green have been accepted for inclusion in the formatted index. Red ones have not been accepted yet. The occurrence I am at blinks. The edit bar at the bottom shows the formatted references. The status bar shows command hints. The vertical bar at the right shows occurrences and page references. I can navigate the occurrences by clicking or using the up and down arrow keys. I can accept or reject an occurrence by pressing the space bar. I can edit occurrences, for instance, to create subheadings. I press Enter to go to the edit bar, type a comma and some text, and press Enter again to apply. The edit refers to page 49. I do not have to type. I can select words by pressing Ctrl plus arrow keys. Pressing Ctrl plus comma pastes them into the edit bar. I press Enter to apply. I'll edit a few more.
I press the right arrow key to go back to the Index View panel. The edited occurrences of terrestrial exoplanets have now been added as new entries. The previewer shows the formatted entry with subheadings. Let me close the editor and briefly show what the project looks like after several hours of work. Many more entries have been accepted, edited, and added. The final step is to close the editor and export the formatted index. Here's the exported index manuscript. By default, the exported index is in two-column format. I can adjust and edit the index in Word as needed. That's all for now. We only scratched the surface of Textract's features. Thank you for watching. For more information, see Textract.com.